In the previous video, we learned about binary operations. Uh, related to the idea of a binary operation is the idea of closure. So let's imagine we have an operation on some set X. So what that means, of course, is that a uh, circle here is an operation of X cross X to X. And in case you're wondering, you can draw this circle in LaTeX by doing backslash C-I-R-C, -C, short for circle. So we have a binary operation on the circle there, uh, on, the, on the set X with respect to the circle operation. What if we have some subset Y inside of X? Can we define a binary operation on Y using the binary operation that's on X? Well, is there a way of defining circles so that Y cross Y gives us something? Well, since Y belongs to X, then because we can do, we have a product, or we have a, we have a, we have an operation for every possible pairing of x and x. If we restrict the domain to only be operands coming from y, then of course this result, uh, this result here will be well defined. But in order to guarantee that this itself is an operation, we need that when you combine things from y to y, you always get something in y. Is that always the case? Uh, we know, we know that'll always go to x, but can we restrict it just to y? Mm -hmm. And if we can, we say that the operation is, that we say the subset is closed with respect to the operation. That is, the, the, the resultant of combining any two elements from Y gives you something in Y. And again, this is a phenomenon we see a lot. Like on the previous video, we had talked about the following important sets. N, uh, N, Z, Q, R, and C. You know, we talked about with respect to addition and, and multiplication that these were these were all binary operations on these sets. And in fact, what we can say a little bit better is that R is actually closed with respect to addition, the same addition of complex numbers. The addition of real numbers is just a special case of addition of complex numbers because a real plus a real always gives you a real. And likewise, addition of two rational numbers is just a special case of real addition. The sum of two rationals will always give you a rational. And the same thing is true for integers. The, the sum of two integers is really just a special case of rational addition. And same thing with natural numbers as well. It's just a special case of integer uh, addition. Same thing with multiplication. Now, you might have noticed in the previous video that when we talk about binary operations, I did not mention subtraction or division. And there are some, there's some reasons to mention there. So first of all, when it comes to subtraction, um, subtraction as our usual sense, in, in, in its usual sense, subtraction is an operation on C. It's an operation on R. And in fact, the, the subtraction operation on the real numbers is just a restriction of complex subtraction. A real minus a real is in fact a real again. Same thing is true for rationals and same thing is true for integers. Um, I should mention though that subtraction is not, it's not an operation. It's not an operation on the natural numbers. Because subtraction, if you subtract two natural numbers, you might not get a natural number back. You know, case in point, we could take something like zero minus two. That gives us negative two, which is not a natural number. And so subtraction, although subtraction is an operation on the integers, if you subtract any two integers, you get back an integer. If you take the subset of the natural numbers, the difference of two natural numbers is not necessarily a natural number here. And so we would say that N is not, it's not closed. It's not closed under subtraction. viewing it as a subset, right, of the integers. But on the other hand, the integers, the, the integers um, are closed under subtraction. Again, viewing this as a subset of like, say the rational numbers or something. Or we could also say that the natural numbers are closed under addition with respect to integers. So there is an important distinction that one has to make there. Uh, that the that the closure principle, if you restrict the operation to a smaller subset, will the resultant always fall inside of the smaller set? And that's not always the case. Like we see here with uh, with uh, with the natural numbers. What about division, right? When it comes to division, division's not an operation either 
um, for the for some of the same reasons, right? Like if you take, for example, one divided by two, this is not an integer. This is not an integer, even though one and two are integers, right? So you you don't have closure under addition uh, under division like if you do integers, but you also have problems with even the rationals, right? Um, if you take like say two divided by zero, this is not inside the rational field, uh, even though two and zero are inside that set. So you have some issues there. The problem, the problem here isn't necessarily closure. The problem is division in its usual sense is not an operation because division would be it would be a function from q to cross. Well, you basically get q take away zero because we can't divide by zero, and that pro then produces something in Q, right? So the, the, the fact the sets don't exactly match up with each other exactly when it comes to division. Now, there is one way of sort of fixing that using subsets that's related to this idea of closure. When it comes to division, right, we usually think of the following type sets. Um, so we're going to take the set Q star. This is going to be the set right here. This is going to be the set of rational numbers. So we're going to take x inside of the rationals, uh, but x is not zero. So we just take the non-zero rationals. This is often defined to be q star. We do a similar thing for r star, and we do a similar thing for c star right here. These sets represent the non-zero rationals, reals, and uh, complex numbers. I should mention that Q star, of course, is obviously a subset of Q. And this set right here is closed. It's closed under multiplication. Q star is closed under multiplication. Uh, likewise, R star is closed under multiplication. And C star. C star is likewise closed under multiplication. Of course, rational, real, and complex multiplication in all those situations. Uh, and so those are important subsets. Uh, another reason why these subsets are important is because in all of these cases, we can define division. Division, we can take as a map from Q star cross Q star, and we map it onto Q star. And so we can't necessarily define division in all situations, but we can actually take the quotient on this subset that's closed under multiplication. Uh, I should mention though that Q star, R star, and C star, these sets are not, they're not closed with respect to addition. That if you take the sum of two non-zero rationals, you can in fact get zero. For example, one half plus negative one half is equal to zero. And so you get some issues there, right? And so you can see why we kind of play around with sets at times. Sometimes I want to focus on this set because it's closed under this operation, maybe not this other one. Sometimes I want to focus on this set because this operation, like division, is defined, even though addition no longer becomes an operation. The sets for which form, uh, the set in play matters, right? Because we need the operands and the resultant to be part of all of those sets, like so. Uh, I want to mention that when it comes to division, though, like if you try to define something like non-zero integers, right? Division still doesn't work in that situation like we saw before. Uh, one half is not an integer. It's not even a non-zero integer. Uh, and so we don't necessarily focus on the non-zero integers as often as we do, say, Q, R, or C, because we can make multiplication into closed subset um, and we, get multi we also get division. I should mention, though, that if you do take like non-zero integers, um, you would be closed under additions, um, closed under multiplication, excuse me. You're not closed under addition. Uh, you do get closure under multiplication, but division is not extendable here. And so, therefore, we don't really talk about Z star too much. I don't know, but one potentially could do it. Uh, let's see. Another example we saw in the previous video, we talked about function composition. Uh, just as a reminder, if you take x to the x, right, this is the set of functions of the form f goes from x to x. Right. This is this is a this is a set with a binary operation of function composition. Right. So we have this binary operation. You have x to the x, comma circled, and in this case here, circle is genuine. The real McCoy function composition. An important subset of this thing is s sub x. Remember, x sub x. This right here is the set of permutations. The set of permutations uh, from x to x. That is. The, the function x to x, these functions f do not have to be bijective functions. In sx, they are bijective. They have inverses, uh, function inverses here. This is an important 
This is an important uh, subset of x to the x. And in fact, this subset is closed under function composition. x sub x here is closed under composition. In which case, it's not often called function composition in that case. It's often called permutation multiplication, which might seem a little bit weird, but uh, th that's what we call it. We call it multiplication of the permutations. It's a very important subset, uh, which is closed under function composition.